What's going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. In today's episode, we're gonna be making a trip to our local farmer's market and grocery store. And by farmer's market and grocery store, I of course mean our garden. And we're gonna be taking this basket and filling it up from this to this in today's episode. Let's go. All right, so first on the list to harvest are these Numex Joe Parker peppers. These suckers are absolutely loaded. I cannot get enough of these things. We already picked a bunch of them, but we wanna get them all off the plant because we got cold weather coming. I wanna get these peppers out of the ground. I am gonna show you guys how to move some peppers indoors. That'll be for a later video. We're gonna take a couple of these beautiful pepper varieties and pot them up, take them indoors as kind of a, a potted perennial, if you will. But look at these peppers. Wow, wow, they are beautiful. They are absolutely stunning. And they have been so productive this year. They're kind of a sweet, spicy, almost like a Serrano, but way more tame, not nearly as hot as a Serrano. They still pack a punch, but they are so good. Roast it up, we'll roast them, we'll also dry them. They just make such a great, versatile pepper uh, for cooking, and uh, we really love them. Now, we're gonna pick them even if they're turning brown like this. Um, brown is actually the middle stage. They start out as green, and green plus red equals brown. A lot of you have not quite caught on to that yet. A lot of you have written in saying, my red peppers are turning brown, what's going on? And so it's kind of just a natural, uh, you're just getting kind of some of the color wheel going on. So go back to art class and take brown, or take uh, green and red and mix together and what do you get? You get brown. So it's just the red coming out of the pepper as it's ripening. And so we're gonna pick even some of these brown peppers so these green peppers, we'll harvest them as just like a, like a, almost like a hatch chili. They're so good. They're still pretty spicy, but these would not dry very well. They're, they have too much moisture. They're not fully ripe. And so these are going to actually mold if you just let them sit indoors. But the red ones, these red ones will dry up really, really well. So the red ones, what we'll do is we will actually, uh, we'll hang them up, let them dry. We'll daisy chain them all together let them dry and then we can use them for making like salsas with dry chilies. Um, in Mexican cuisine, um, a lot of dry chilies are used to make like your, your red salsas and stuff like that. So beautiful, so delicious. But these green chilies are also really versatile because you can roast them up, get them all blistered, and then you can um, blister them up on the grill or even on the stove top. And you can dice them up for making things like, I mean, well, basically anything. I mean, we make, we put them, we put them with our eggs. We put them in uh, tortillas with cheese. We make quesadillas and whatnot. You can make fajitas. They're so versatile. So we really use all different uh, stages of pepper, but um, just incredible, incredible yields on these plants. It's unbelievable. And we've already harvested from these plants twice already this year. So insane. Check it out. Not too bad from three plants we've already harvested from. That is amazing. That is quite the haul. In the hot sauce video, we already picked a bunch of these serranos, jalapenos. We're just coming through. I'm gonna pick them green or red because I wanna get them off the plant. Again, we're getting some cold weather, nowhere near frost weather, but I just wanna get these peppers off the plant because then what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the plants that produce the best, we're gonna cut them way back, and, uh, and then we're gonna move them inside so we can grow them throughout winter under some grow lights. And so I wanna get these completely harvested. And just like, just like the New Max Joe Parker peppers, the Serranos are exactly the same. The red peppers can be dried and you're gonna have something like, uh, it's just kind of like a, uh, like a sun-dried chili. There's lots of terms that they give it in, uh, in Mexico for chilies that are sun-dried. Um, uh, like uh, chili de arbol is just one, like a sun-dried chili, right? Um, but there's so many other names for chilies that are dried. We're gonna be drying up the red ones. And then the green ones, we're gonna be roasting up and using fresh. They're all delicious. I have no, no different, uh, I have no preference. They're all great. Fun fact for you guys. In Mexican cuisine, there are different names associated with fresh peppers versus dry peppers. Same pepper, different name based on the state that it's in. So in Spanish, if you have a fresh pepper, fresh is fresca. And if you take this fresh pepper, this red pepper and dry it, it becomes seco or dry. And so if you take a serrano and you take a fresca serrano 
and you dry it, it no longer becomes a Serrano. You're going to be asking, if you go to the grocery store or to the, to the um, bodega, you're going to be asking, or a fruteria, there's lots of places that sell dried chilies, you're going to be asking for a, a chile seco. Chile seco is a dried Serrano. What about Anaheim? Anaheim dried is Chile, Colorado, when it's dried. Now you wouldn't dry this, this is, this is an Anaheim. Dry a red one, becomes Chile, Colorado. What about a Poblano? Ancho. Ancho is a dried Poblano. Uh, what about a Jalapeno, right? Jalapeno is a Chipotle. So you have a Jalapeno, take the red one. We don't have any red ones, they're all green. Oh, which we do. Beautiful, by the way. Take a jalapeno, dry it. Fresca, jalapeno. Seco, chipotle. It's awesome, awesome. Now, uh, there are lots of others as well. There's a Casa Bell, and then uh, the Casa Bell is a, uh, like your, like your cherry bomb peppers, right? The, the, um, what else? There's Chile de Arbol. There are so many more. There's tons of fun, but that's a fun fact for you. You can look up some of these fresh peppers versus dried, and um, and it's so unique. There's so many cool uh, cool names given to dried chilies versus fresh, and so uh, we're gonna be harvesting both for fresh and dry peppers to use in our cooking. So I do want to mention too. A lot of you usually ask about my opinions on the varieties that I grew, if I liked them, how they did for me, if I'd grow them again. And so I thought I'd touch on that because uh, we had a lot of success with peppers this year. Despite the cool weather, despite the, uh, the amount of rain we had, and despite the really late start to spring, we actually had a shockingly good year for peppers. Now there's a few varieties that I would probably not grow again next year. Um, now they're great varieties, but here in Michigan with our climate, our short season, um, there's certain varieties that, you know, maybe would do better in a container, right? But just not as good in our garden. And so one would be the Chiltepin. I love the Chiltepin pepper. It's beautiful. It has a great flavor, especially when using hot sauces and stuff. Problem is we have not gotten a single ripe pepper all summer. They are beautiful. They're loaded. As you'll see, I will show a little kind of a, a pan clip of them, but they don't really ripen up that fast. Second pepper that I might have some considerations on is the Tabasco. Now I love the Tabasco, don't get me wrong. Beautiful pepper. This plant is absolutely loaded. I mean, it's beyond loaded. Um, to say loaded would be an insult to this plant's production. This thing is crazy. And uh, so you see that as well, I'll show, I'll. Um, I'll have Ashlyn show you how many peppers are on this plant. It's just, I mean, if you can't see it, this is like unreal how loaded this plant is. And the problem is they've just taken so long to ripen up. Now, we are getting peppers, but we're basically getting them at the very tail end of the season. So much so that I'm not really sure it's 100% worth growing next year, the space that it took up. I might throw it in a container and see how it does. But uh, in the garden, doesn't really excel all that well. Or what I would have done is started it much sooner, like late February, had a nice sized plant to move out to the garden. That's another alternative. Or another alternative is I could chop this back, get it inside, overwinter it, and then bring it out and we'd be much further ahead. So some different options I may try, but beautiful plant, incredible production, just takes a super long time to ripen. Now, one that I always grow, I will never not grow, is the jalapeno. Now, the reason why the jalapeno is always in my garden is because it's so versatile. It's so productive. We get pounds and pounds of these. Now, this variety is known as early jalapeno. There's also a tam jalapeno. There's lots of different uh, strains of jalapeno. I personally love the early jalapeno for here in Michigan. It ripens up fast, produces a lot and it's got a great size for things like stuffing, but you can also pickle them, do a lot with them, so they become a really versatile pepper as well um, in the kitchen. So I absolutely love the jalapeno. Now one that I grew this year for the very first time that I will be adding to my garden every single year will be the new Max Joe Parker pepper. Um, we already harvested most of the peppers from this side of the bed. 
actually, yeah, this side is basically done. But this plant, let's say these plants, these plants are loaded. And we just keep getting pounds and pounds of these beautiful peppers. So um, definitely one to give a shot. Um, if you've not tried them, certainly give them a try, especially if you don't mind a slightly spicy pepper. They are an A plus pepper in my opinion. All right, and the final pepper that we got here to harvest from is called the Bequinho Bequinho pepper. It is actually known as bird's beak pepper, and it's a Brazilian pickling pepper. It is so delicious, so floral, so sweet, not spicy. It looks mean, but it's actually sweet, and it's loaded. Check it out. Oh, check this out. Wow. This plant is just loaded. There are so many peppers on this plant. We're saving this for seed stock. That's why, that's why we have it planted away from the other pepper plants because I absolutely love growing this pepper and it's such a reliable producer and it's great pickled. This makes some of the best little pickled peppers you've ever had. Now these peppers, they are very floral. Um, if you've ever had like a habanero, habaneros, yes, they're incredibly spicy, but they're known for that really beautiful floral taste to them. And what's awesome about these is these taste like they should melt your mouth off. They taste like, uh, they look and taste like they should be the hottest pepper you've ever had, but they actually are strikingly sweet. They have a little heat, very, very little. I would say, I mean, uh, oh goodness. I mean, if we're talking on like a scale from one to 10 on heat, I'd give them like a two. They do have a very mild heat, but the floral flavor is just out of this world. So there we go, guys. Hopefully you all enjoyed. Hopefully you all were inspired to grow some of these amazing peppers. And we got some bonus tomatoes. Check it out. We actually were able to get some, this is heavy. We were able to get some beautiful Fetterlies. Wonderful paste tomato. Got some beautiful little Romas. Got some giant Crimsons. You know we couldn't have a garden without those. We got some incredible Rosa de Burns. We even got ourselves a little Kellogg's breakfast. So yeah, really great harvest. Also, there's a bunch of cherries in there I just haven't picked yet. But beautiful, look at that spread. Look at that spread, the color, the vibrancy. I'm gonna dry these up, make some salsa with them, roast them up. I don't know what else I'm gonna do with them. Lots of stuff. So I'm excited and take these back home and get them, get them in my belly. So I hope you guys enjoyed, hope you, uh, hope you all learned something new. If you did, make sure to throw a like up there, subscribe if you haven't already. Share this video with a friend that might benefit from a little garden inspiration, some garden inspiration. I like that. Um, so uh, if you think they're going to like some garden inspiration, make sure to throw a like up there, share this video with them, and we'll catch you guys all in the next episode. All right, take care. Grow bigger. Bye. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, and if Peter Piper picked a peck of pe pickled peppers, how many pickled peppers could he pick? And so today we're going to be Peter Piper, and we're going to pick a peck of pickled peppers. <laughs>